Everybody loves Mega Man. It's been decades since the lovable blue scam first blasted his way into our hearts, and an avalanche of games followed, with new installments and spin-offs releasing all the time. Perhaps the most enduringly beloved of these was the Mega Man X series, which isn't technically about the same Mega Man, but refined a lot of what people loved about his games. While there would eventually be a whopping eight games in the X series, give or take if you count the RPG, with the original still standing as the most beloved one, I have very fond memories of the sequel, both from playing it in my youth and from when I completed it a few years ago on Super Beard Brothers. But it's been long enough that I'm curious to see if that feeling still holds, which is why today I am re-completing Mega Man X2. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist New Game Plus, a show in which I am re-completing the first 120 episodes of the original Completionist lineup. More information for that is in the description down below in that link who can go ahead and uh, get caught up as to why we're doing this. In my time on YouTube, I have been blown away by the amount of people who've come out of the woodwork saying that Mega Man X is sick. I know it's kind of a weird thing to say, but I love X, I love Zero, I love the franchise. Later ones are a little iffy, but for the most part, X1 through X4 are incredible games that I really believe everyone should play. And Capcom said so, and it happened. You guys can right now purchase the Mega Man X Legacy Collection 1 and 2, which features X 1 through 8 right now on the PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. And I figured if they're going to celebrate that momentous occasion, so can we. So today, we're going to take another look at another X game. Today, we're re-completing Mega Man X 2. Let's do this. Yes. Following the original Mega Man X was never going to be easy, but X2 was up for the challenge, and is even considered by some to be better than the first game. While I wouldn't necessarily go that far, it definitely took an if it ain't broke don't fix it approach, which secured its reputation as a beloved game, alongside the other early entries in the series. As the more intense and serious sister series to the original Mega Man games, the Mega Man X series charged its way into our cold robotic hearts right away, and while it lost a little bit of appeal with each successive sequel, the fatigue was yet to set in when Mega Man X2 came out on the Super Nintendo in 1994. While copies of that original version are a pain to find now, let alone the price of them, the release of the recent Mega Man X Legacy Collections has brought Mega Man back to the masses. I played these games a lot back in the day, when I was but a young completionist, and my beard was but a distant dream. Ask anybody who I hung out with on the playground. Back in 1994, these games were the shit, and everybody knew it! While I don't remember it being too difficult to be back then, or when I played it even a few years ago, this stroll down memory lane won't be quite a peaceful and reflective one. It's gonna be a mad dash through a future overrun with robots. First up, I'll have to beat a cavalcade of crazy bosses spread across eight levels, each of which will get me new sweet-ass weapons. While you can do these in any order, and some of the weapons give you an advantage over certain other bosses, I'm going to ignore the recommended order because I'm just that much of a badass, and because it will be way more fun. Next up, I'll also be beating those three special bosses. Ooh in order to collect the three parts of Zero, X's long-haired blade-wielding bestie. These guys move around between the eight levels, but I'm gonna have to track them all down to get my friend back because I'm loyal. Also because that's the only way to get one of the game's two endings, but mostly loyalty. And lastly, I'll be grabbing all the collectibles the game's got to offer, like health tanks, sub tanks, which lets you store health for later on, and of course, X's super rad armor pieces. Now the armor, like in the first game, is technically optional, but nothing is optional when you choose to call yourself the completionist. And besides, it looks way cooler than the standard blue Mega Man look. And each piece gives you some super dope ability to boot, like dashing in the air, or having a helmet tell me where all the secrets in the game are. Man, you know, I really wish I could dash in the air, like in real life. Do you know how cool that would make me look to all the other kids in the playground? I, by playground, I obviously mean the office. Do you have any idea how jealous Brett would be if I got those boots? I gotta have them boots! Boots! 
Mega Man X2 is exactly as cool as I remember it being, offering a top-notch Mega Man experience with reliable run-and-gun gameplay, solid design work, and plenty of personality. After seemingly taking out Sigma, the leader of a group of renegade robots known as Mavericks at the end of the first game, X2 picks up six months later, with X going after a particularly hardcore group of Mavericks who are known as the X Hunters, because they hunt... Uh, well, you get it. Anyways, they're taunting X with the body parts of his friend Zero, who blew himself up saving the day at the end of Mega Man X. And that kind of thing just isn't cool, man. While the story behind the game isn't particularly deep and definitely isn't loaded with twists and turns, it does what it needs to, which is give you an excuse to go kick some Maverick ass. The looseness of the plot allows for completion of the levels in whatever order you want, which is something I've always thought was a neat feature of not just the X series, but but really every Mega Man game. Yes, the plot is basically go blow up some bad robots, but that's either a weakness or a strength depending on who you're asking. And I say it's a strength because it puts the focus squarely on the gameplay and design, which is where it should be. So there, in typical Mega Man fashion, Mega Man X2 is a side-scrolling adventure in which you blast your way through countless robots, picking up new weapons and armor pieces as you go. The X series puts way more emphasis on mobility than the classic games, which means a lot of wall jumping, dashing, and bouncing all over the place, which you all know I love. Apart from that, it wouldn't be Mega Man if I didn't get to shoot little yellow orbs out of my hand cannon, which I most certainly will be doing thousands upon thousands of freaking times. My memory of the game is that it's totally possible to get through it with just your orbs and charge blasts. But I don't want to let the game's other crazy weapons go to waste, so I'll be whipping those out too. Although, given the conversation around the strike chain's appearance last time I played this game, maybe I shouldn't use the phrase whipping those out. The weapons and armor pieces have a real effect on the way I get to interact with the game's levels, which are designed for maximum flexibility and replayability since I get to do them in whatever damn order I please. While none of them are radical alternatives, alterations to the formula, they each try to bring some sort of twist to the standard gameplay, and do about as good of a job of differentiating themselves from each other as it's possible to do in this kind of game. The levels are also nicely themed to the Maverick that's running them, and the ability to track the X Hunters from level to level is a neat idea as well. There's a great balance between enemies, traversal, and both at the same time, because getting shot at is exactly what I want when I'm jumping over spikes. On the whole, the stages scream MEGA MAN while allowing for the extra bit of freedom and discovery that the X series specializes in. It's all designed with what can only be described as an edgy cartoon aesthetic. And if that doesn't sound like a delightful contradiction to you, then we probably won't ever be friends. That may sound harsh, but there's something about a scowling robotic ostrich that's just wildly charming. And that extends to all of the game's villains and bosses, who are adorable and badass at the same time, largely because most of them are based on animals. The boss fights didn't get any harder for me this time around, but by now I'm pretty familiar familiar with these guys' patterns. And besides, how threatening can dudes named stuff like Bubble Crab and Crystal Snail really be? That's not to say they're not fun though, as they're all pretty uniquely designed despite adhering to the wacky but still kinda cool boss vibe I expect from these games. The same is actually true for the weapons you get for putting the Mavericks down, and I would say that they're even weirder and for the most part more fun than they were in the first game. Apart from the aforementioned and unfortunately shaped strike chain, there are also spinning discs, mines, and a bunch of other beautiful nonsense, all of which have a secondary mode when you charge them up. While these weapons aren't really necessary when it comes to beating the game, they're just fun, and it feels nice feeling like you have more variety than you necessarily need. It's like a buffet. In a perfect world, I'd obviously just get seven slabs of prime rib, but after three or four hours of those, you gotta mix it up with a side or two, or you're gonna spoil the experience for yourself. The same holds true for the armor pieces, which aren't strictly necessary to have a good time, but spice things up enough that they're worth going out of the way for. Dashing in the air feels dope, and all of the other armor armor abilities also do a good job of making you feel like you're scaling up. While the dash boots are dope and the helmet is kind of a novelty, the crash armor is kind of weird, but the best takeaway from all of this has to be the new charge shot mechanic. One of my favorite things about the X series is that from game to game, the charge buster gets better and better. And with X2, it just shows the evolution really early on. As far as collectibles go, you'll have to explore all the little alcoves to find them all, which isn't that hard. It does, however, do a good job of incentivizing you to look around, which is easier the more gear you have. I was looking for all of them sub tanks, hard tanks, and armor pods, all of which are tucked away in those nooks and crannies. Nooks and crannies, yes. Perhaps this would be more accurate. Nooks and crannies rather than alcoves. Yeah. 
A big improvement from Mega Man X2 has got to be the vehicles. In X1, you don't really get any kind of high-powered vehicle aside from like the boxing tank robot. In this one, you get one that speeds fast and has a drill component, and you get a freaking bike. They're just really cool things to have in a Mega Man X game. Overall, Mega Man X2 is exactly as satisfying as I remember it being, and its replayability may be its greatest strength. It's not challenging, but it's also not mindless. And if you like Mega Man, which I most certainly do, then there's really not much here to object to. It provides the quality promised by the first game, and even if it doesn't hold quite as much of a place in my heart as that one, it differentiates itself in enough ways to be worth revisiting, even years later. Like Mega Man getting interrupted partway through his second attack, this game is a blast and a half. Get it? I apologize for nothing. Mega Man X2 does as good of a job as I remember at rewarding you as you play through it, with new weapons and armor unlocked at a pretty steady pace, so you always feel compelled to keep blasting and dashing your way through the levels until you've got them all. And as if that weren't enough, there's a sweet, sweet reward waiting for you at the end of that mechanized rainbow. The sure you can! Yeah, like from Street Fighter, you big dummy. That was mean, I'm sorry. But anyway, like the Hadouken featured in the first game, it's a one-hit kill, assuming you're at full health, and it's satisfying and fun pretty much every time you use it beyond just a neat reference. You get it late in the game in Agile's X Hunter stage. From there, be prepared to do some fancy footwork with that flame runner and clear the spikes to victory, from which you can slide down the wall and reveal the X capsule to receive Ken Shoryuken. Note that you do need full health in order to make the capsule appear as well as you have to have all the collectibles in the game to make the capsule appear. Honestly, it feels nice to know that the game wants to reward you with cool sh** right up until the very end. All my friends stopped giving me gifts years ago, which is why I've become a bitter, lonely hermit. Hey! Get off my lawn! You kids! And you fidget spinners and sh**! But my crankiness has precious little to do with the experience of completing Mega Man X2 again, which was breezy, fun, and had no real lasting psychological consequences, which is something I wish I could say about every game here on the show. My brain has taken a real beating by now, let me tell ya. While I revisited Mega Man X2, there were eight heart tanks collected, eight special weapons unlocked for beating eight punk-ass robo-animals, four energy tanks collected, one Shoryuken that makes me feel so incredibly badass, two hours of total playtime, and three zero parts collected because I'm a loyal friend no matter what you may have heard about me. All in all, I had an incredible time going back to Mega Man X2, just as I've had a great time going back to the original over the years. It's not a time-consuming or punishing experience, but it's fun and chill, and exactly what I want from a Mega Man game, which is good enough for me. I'm glad I picked it up again, and not just because it brought me back to my days as a beardless youth, hustling for cheat codes in the mean streets of LA. Okay, well, Maybe that's part of it. At the end of the day, Mega Man X2 is a solid addition to the pantheon of games out of the X franchise. I think it's a very, 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 very good game with great design, incredible music, overall better presentation. But there's something just so nostalgic about Mega Man X1 that I get excited for playing it every time I see the game on screen. I think I would pick X1 over X2 any day of the week. However, both games are freaking phenomenal because you get Street Fighter one-hit KO moves in both of them when you complete them. So, with that in mind, guys, I still give this game my completionist rating of Complete It. Complete It! That's all the time we have for today, guys. So please, as always, let me know what you thought about today's episode somewhere on the internet. If you like what you saw, you love New Game Plus, give us a like and drop a comment down below to let us know what games you want to see next on New Game Plus. I don't know what number New Game Plus this one is, but I've completed on stream at least 29 games. So I'm almost a third of the way there. A third? Fourth. I'm almost a fourth of the way there. I'm never going to finish all these games, but I will, but I won't.